It was 2005 and my ear training professor wanted to talk to me after class. I thought maybe he would want to recommend I skip to the next level. But instead, because I had been struggling, he recommended I withdraw, practice on my own, and continue next semester. For some of the other students, this stuff just seemed like it was second nature, but that was definitely not the case for me. I really struggled to hear intervals accurately on a consistent basis, so I knew I needed to try something different, an approach that would help me learn a lot smarter and grow faster. So let's first take a look at what intervals are. So an interval is simply just the distance between two notes. So if you're playing right here, very small one in Western music, it's just the smallest interval we have. We've got 12 notes, so you can go all the way up to the 12th one, and that's called an octave. And we can actually go beyond that, but we're gonna focus on just the basics. So up to the 12th one. And they are the building blocks of pitch. So we have three types of intervals. We have ascending, so going up, descending, going down, and then also harmonic at the same time. And that is the building blocks of chords. You know, any chord you have is just a collection of intervals um, building up and it gives you a certain sound. We're not going to focus on that at all. We're just going to do just melodies here. So ascending, descending, and there's all types of other ways of ear training and focusing on different aspects of music. But again, we're going to focus on just intervals. So just pitch, right? So you can hear this interval. There's a certain you know, dissonance to its harshness, certain emotion you hear from it. And that can be enough to kind of latch on and memorize what this sound is. But I still struggled. I used to sometimes be like a TV that just wasn't totally in focus. And sometimes it was in, sometimes it was out. But the thing that really helped get it all clear for me was just memorizing songs that use these melodies. So for this first one here, this is an easy one, Jaws. So it's a minor second, and if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. I'll put a link in the description down below to a playlist I made called Music Theory Basics that goes right from the beginning of theory through some of the basics. But we don't even need to know that. Just know that this is called a minor second. There's a certain sound to it. And Jaws, it's really lower. I can't go that long on a small keyboard, but you know, it's really on an upright bass, real low with a bow, and that makes it really tense. All it is is that interval and the rhythm that speeds it up. And that, that interval right there just basically launched Steven Spielberg's career, you know? It made the movie, or it was a big part of it, you know? And, uh, and John Williams for, of course, writing that, right? So that's a good way to memorize that sound right there. A minor second going up is Jaws. Now you could just reverse it in your ear to get that descending sound, but it doesn't always work quite as well. So another example would be Bill Beethoven. Right? The first notes there. There it is, a descending minor second, so going down, right? That can help really get it in your ear and connect it to something that you're already familiar with and some emotion you already have attached to that song, you attach it to that interval, really helps speed this whole process up. You know, one other example, happy birthday, going up a major second now. Right? Now if I do that over here, there you go, I'm starting a different note, but you can still recognize the song, so it's in a different key, but you can do it on all 12 of the notes. If you do the same intervals between it all, it'll sound the same, and the same rhythm too, and it's the same too, and that's how you play in different, different keys and stuff. So why even learn about intervals and memorize them by ear? Well, it strengthens your inner ear big time. It's not just your actual ears, it doesn't really matter, it's your inner ear, your brain that processes stuff that makes sense of music, you know, somebody could actually not hear very well, could have hearing aids, but a great inner ear can figure out music really well, and vice versa. It's like, you know, if you had a really expensive camera, or even a better example, a guitar, the best guitar in the world, if you don't know how to play, you can't play, but somebody who plays really well could take the cheapest, most beat up guitar and make great music with it. So we wanna really strengthen our inner ear because it, it helps us to can make sense of music a lot better. We connect to our instrument, whether it's guitar or something else. And it just ultimately, it makes you grow a lot faster, you know? It makes you play more the way you wanna play. So let's look at some more examples. We're not gonna go over examples for every single interval here, but just here are some larger ones. Here is uh, a perfect fourth. So we have, here comes the bribe. We've got So that right there, 
They just go up the same fret up to string here, except between these strings because they're tuned differently. And that is a perfect fourth. Here comes the bride, right? Now what about a perfect fifth, Star Wars? We've got... So that right there, that's also a power chord. Right, perfect fifth. That's why you see like a G5 written out because it's, it, all it is is an interval. It's just a perfect fifth, right? Now what about descending perfect fifth? We've got uh, the Flintstones is a good theme song. Right there and so on. So you can see you can start building up a little database and this will really connect you to the intervals and how they sound and how they feel. So the bigger the interval, the harder it is to hear because the distance gets so far away, there's less to kind of grab onto. And it becomes a little harder to perform, especially for singers. And then you don't really hear this in music as much. So it makes it a little harder for us to find examples to latch onto. But that makes the examples even that much more important. So let's look at this where we call a big leap. How about a major sixth? So if we do the MBC theme, just like the Simpsons, three syllables, goes up a big leap there. You can see how big of a leap it is now. That's called a major six. And it's kind of a nice, sweet sounding, hopeful interval. So there you go, that's their jingle. How about a minor seventh with Star Trek, the original theme? Right, that first one. That's a very strange sounding interval. And the person who ever uh, you know, wrote that, threw that in there right out the gate. It gives you this weird, this spacey sound works perfect for space. So there's that minor seventh. Let's do one more. How about a major seventh? Something like NBC or The Simpsons, like that tritone, that harsh interval, a major seventh is also kind of harsh, but take on me from aha. Just three syllables. Right, same thing like Simpsons. Goes up to a harsh interval. This is much further though, big, big leap. And then goes up one fret to resolve it. So same idea. So the next step is to compile your own list of songs that work for you. I could have just made up my own list, but I want you to have your own personalized list. And I found this site that I'm not an affiliate of at all. I just thought it was really helpful. I wanted to share it. It's called earmaster.com. If you go there, go into the products section and there's a free tools, interval song, chart maker you can then go in and they have all these examples for both ascending and descending and with links to youtube where the timestamp will take you right to that spot where that interval is you can hear it and then you can go through and select the ones that you like the best and it'll make your own list and unfortunately you can't download it but you can do a screenshot but you can also print it out so you can have it with you at all times and really make this a part of your ear training now, if you want to get even more out of ear training with intervals so that your playing improves really fast, check out my playlist right here, Music Theory Basics, because between improving your inner ear and your musical knowledge, there'll be no stopping you.